This chapter is about the security and ethics. Uh, in first part, we will discuss the security. Okay, uh, let me tell you the sequence in which we are going to uh, study different uh, security risks. So first of all, um, security risk, the name of the security risk, risk and its description, its possible effects and methods to uh, remove that security risk. So let's discuss the first security risk and that is very common and it's hacking. So most of you um, might be aware with the term hacking. Basically it's gaining illegal access to uh, someone's computer. So um, hacking will lead to different uh, problem, different effects. The first is um, it can lead to identity theft. That means your personal private information, um, for example, your credit card can be misused, okay, with your name. That, that is the identity theft. Uh, secondly, it can, um, uh, your data can be deleted or corrupted. And how to uh, protect your computer against hacking? So first is very important, very common, and that's firewall. You can install a firewall. So firewall works just like a filter. So all the data uh, coming from any, um, uh, any outsource, uh, for example, from the internet, that will be filtered first, okay? If that data meets a certain rule, then it will be allowed to enter in your computer. Otherwise it will be blocked. So you can also use strong passwords. Uh, password is also one of the very, uh, you know, uh, strong method to uh, prevent um, uh, to prevent your data being hacked. Uh, if someone gets access to your data, he will not be able to open it. Okay, that's also very important. Uh, he will not be able to enter your computer if you have a uh, if you have set a strong password, and then you can. Uh, use any proper anti-hacking software. Next terminology is the cracking and hacking. So hacking, you are already aware. We have just discussed. Now what's cracking? So cracking is basically getting access to the source codes, okay? So that you can edit the source code, okay? So why the source code, or code is edited? for a software because you want to use that software for your own benefits, okay? For a certain malicious purposes, okay? That's why source code is edited. So that's also illegal. And next coming towards the viruses, it's also very common terminology. Virus is basically a program, a code that can self replicate. That means it can make a lot of copies of itself and it can delete your, um, your work, your data, it can corrupt your data, so that the virus is created with a bad intention. Um, then what are the effects of the viruses? It can cause your computer to crash, to malfunction, it can delete your data, it can corrupt your data, and how to protect your computer against viruses. So first, very common, is uh, installing the antivirus software. Secondly, don't use software from unknown sources because uh, we have a habit to you know, go uh, any unknown websites and keep on clicking different links. So you will have to avoid that habit, okay? So don't use any software from unknown sources. And then be careful um, when opening email attachments, okay? Next uh, security issue is the phishing. Uh, phishing is also a method to trick the people, to be fool the people. Uh, basically, um, you are sent um, a legitimate looking email that you think it's coming from your office, your school, or wherever you are working. So uh, you get tricked and you are asked to follow a certain link given in that attachment. Okay, and as soon as you click the link, you are, you know, redirected to a bogus website. That means 
all the data you will enter into that website will go to the wrong hands. So you'll have to be careful. Then phishing, what are the effects? Um, the creator of the email can gain personal data such as bank account number, um, your credit card number, and these type of, you know, your private information. This can also lead to a uh, fraud and identity theft. So how to um, protect your computer against uh, phishing? So most of the ISP, ISPs are the companies which provide you the surface, uh, the service of internet. Okay, just like in Pakistan, PTCL, Neatel. So these are ISPs. So they also provide a filter against such phishing email. Wherever they think that this email has a suspicious link, so they already block it. They have certain, you know, um, uh, software installed. Secondly, the user should always be cautious when opening email attachments. Okay, so this is the same as we have learned in the hacking as well. So actually, these are different, you know, forms of hacking. Okay, so the, the hacker keep on tricking the people using different ways. And then forming. Forming is a different technique. Uh, basically, a malicious code is installed on a user's hard drive. And the code will redirect the user to a fake or bogus website. Okay, most of the time this code um, is installed without your knowledge. Okay, you might have linked on certain, uh, you know, link or uh, anywhere. So that software will install in the background uh, into your computer without your knowledge and secretly uh, sends your information to any bogus website. So again, its uh, effects are the similar as we have learned in the uh, phishing. Uh, your uh, you know personal information can be uh, stolen, can be misused, and that can be lead to identity theft as well. So how to protect against phishing? So anti-spyware. Okay, because now the code is present in your computer. That was the malicious code. So anti-spyware is a, a software which can trace out that software from uh, that code from your computer. The user should always be alert and look out for the clues. So you must have certain knowledge of technology. If your computer is not working, you know, well, um, uh, your computer is not working smoothly. Sometimes it is getting, you know, um, stuck somewhere. Okay, taking too much time in loading certain softwares. So you will have to keep your eyes open. Okay, so these are certain clues. So you'll have to be aware with that. And next is the war driving. So war driving is an act of locating and using wireless internet connection illegally. Okay, for example, you have a um, mobile phone, cell phone, uh, a laptop with you, and you sit somewhere and you get access to an open wireless network and you start using it. So that act is basically a war driving. So how the war driving is, uh, uh, can have certain issues, uh, problems, war driving. The person who is uh, uh, doing this act, or dusra voke jo jiska wireless internet use or okay. So uh, mostly the disadvantage goes to the person whose wireless internet is being used. So what are those effects? It is possible to steal a user's internet time, okay? And then allocation of downloading large files, okay? So your internet time uh, will be consumed illegally. Uh, secondly, it is possible to hack into the wireless network and steal a user's password and other personal information. So this is more dangerous as compared to the first point. In first point, only your internet time is being used. And say in the second point, so your you know personal data is at risk. Okay. Then how to protect against um, 
for driving use of wide equivalent privacy. Okay, this is also one of the uh, features available. You can set up this feature in the router and your computer will be, your network will be more secure. Protect use of the um, <clears throat> wireless device. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can protect your wireless device by having complex passwords, okay? And also use of firewalls to protect your computer from uh, anyone who is outside. Moving to the next topic, it's a spyware or a key logging software. Okay. Um, basically, um, you, the software that gathers information by monitoring key presses on the user's keyboard. The information is then sent back to the person who sent the software. So again, this software is installed in your computer and whatever key uh, you press on your keyboard, that is monitored. Okay, for example, you press A, so that will be monitored. Uh, let's say you are entering the password, your credit card number um, in uh, while <laughs> having some online shopping. So actually your um, credit card number or your login or password are being noted by this software. So what are the effects? Gives the originator access to all the data entered using a keyboard. The originator is the person who uh, has sent this software to you. The software is able to install um, other spyware, read cookies data, and also change the user's default web browser. So all the settings can be changed in your computer. Mm -hmm. And then how to protect against such software. So the same that we have uh, used in the uh, forming, you can install anti-spyware. So the user should always be alert and look out for the clues, the same, okay? These are the same methods that we have already used in forming. So it is very, it has a very close, you know, relation with the forming. Uh, using a mouse to select characters from the password rather than typing them in using a keyboard. So we must use the alternate methods, okay, like onboard screen, um, um, uh, keyboard, or you can use, um, uh, you can enter the information using the drop down menu. So these are the different methods you can uh, protect yourself. And then cookies. So cookies are the small files that are installed in your computer. Whenever you visit a certain website, so basically that website install um, uh, is asks you to enable the cookies. If you enable the cookies, that means a small file will be uh, saved at your hard disk. Um, so what that, um, file will do, how that data is beneficial for you. So every time user visits um, uh, the website, cookies will have collected some key information about the user, okay? For example, when a user uh, buys a CD on a music website, the cookies will have remembered the user's previous buying habits and a message like, um, this often follows uh, customers who bought items in your recent history also bought XYZ, whatever. So, so cookies are not the uh, programs. Uh, basically, these are the pieces of data. Okay. So whenever the user visits that particular website next time, so cookie remembers that user and its buying habits. So it will display you the relevant information, okay? Okay, after cookies, uh, cookies we have the new topic and that's uh, loss of data and data corruption. Okay, we have uh, uh, learned different security issues, security concerns where the data can also be lost. But we have some other 
um, ways where the data can be lost and let's discuss them one by one. Uh, the first is the accidental loss, okay? Uh, accidental loss means that if a person was not well aware of using a uh, computer, uh, accidentally he has deleted certain important information from your computer, that is sort of accidental loss. So how you can protect yourself against such losses? Uh, the first point is common, and that point is use of backups. This is so, so, so important. Save your data on regular basis, also one of the important points, and then use of passwords and user IDs to restrict access to authorized users only. And then uh, another way where your data can be lost is the hardware fault, okay? Uh, Sometimes uh, your hard disk can crash, okay. so your all the data can be lost. So what? Uh, ways how you can protect your data. So again, first is you should have created a backup. Use of UPS, because sometimes the, uh, basically it's an uh, uninterrupted power supply. So um, it can pre prevent power loss using hardware malfunction. Okay? So you will have to use UPS, save data on a regular basis, use parallel systems as backup hardware. Parallel system, okay, your data is being stored on uh, at two places simultaneously, okay? If uh, your data uh, is deleted from some, uh, from first place, the data on the other place will be there. And then software fault can also, one of the, is also one of the cause of data loss. Uh, again, use of backup, okay? Save data on regular basis. And then incorrect computer operation. For example, incorrect shutdown procedure, okay? or uh, you have incorrectly removed uh, your uh, USB uh, flash memory from your computer. You'll have to use a proper way. Again, use of backups. Correct training is also very important. So uh, correct training procedure so that users are aware of the correct operation of hardware. Okay, sometimes users don't know how to remove USBs. So they must be told such important uh, methods. Uh, next topic is firewalls and proxy servers. Okay. Um, Firewall, let's discuss firewall first. Uh, first, firewall can be either a software or hardware, and its purpose is to protect your computer against any um, hacking or illegal access, okay, from, uh, you know, the external network, from the internet. Basically, it filters your information, okay? It's just like a filter, okay? Here, uh, you can, uh, understand the concept uh, from this diagram. This is your computer, user's computer, and here is the firewall in form of hardware or software, okay? And this is the internet. So all the traffic comes to your computer, but it will have to pass through this firewall and then it can enter into your computer, okay? Here you check hoga. Kuch rules lage honge is ke upar. ठीक है अगर वो रूल फॉलो करेगा तो only then that data will be allowed to enter to your computer ठीक है so let's discuss different point what the firewall uh, what are the functions the task tasks that can be carried out by the firewall uh, the first is examining the traffic between the user's computer okay we have already discussed it Check whether the incoming or outgoing data meets a given set of criteria. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't meet the criteria, or uh, if the data fails the criteria, the firewall will block the data. Okay. Logging all incoming and outgoing traffic to allow later interrogation by the user. Okay. Uh, logging means uh, uh, remembering, okay, all sorts of traffic. Okay, noting it down somewhere. 
and then uh, criteria can be set to prevent access to certain undesirable websites okay uh, by keeping a list uh, of all the undesirable ip addresses okay so you can uh, 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 save different IP addresses in the firewall. You can set these IP and block them. So next time uh, the user won't be able to open those websites into the computer. Okay. Helping to prevent viruses or hackers entering the user's computer or internal networks. Warning the user if someone, if some software on their system is trying to access and external data source, okay? And there are certain uh, circumstances where the firewall can't prevent potential harm, uh, harmful traffic, okay? Kuch aisi hai cheeze. Firewall bhi nahi rog sakta, okay? Wo kaise hai? The first point is it cannot prevent individuals or internal network using their own modems to bypass the firewall, okay? Uh, for example, this is the firewall. You can assume it, and this is the internal, you know, network. So uh, if this user is sending any harmful data to this user, okay? So internally, so that data, you know, the firewall uh, can't protect uh, you know, such type of misconduct, okay? Um, implies misconduct or careless, uh, carelessness cannot be controlled, firewall, okay? If an employee is disabled disable kar deta, okay? firewall, then what will happen now your computer is no more safe? Uh, is Kalava user on standalone computers can choose to disable firewall? TK or agar individual computers, ke hai, the user can still disable their firewalls. Okay. Uh, employees misconduct may one thing is more one is ke, uh, that employee can disable the firewall, and secondly, the uh, if the firewall gives you a certain harmful message that certain software is getting access to your computer do you want to allow so if any employee says yes the firewall will not um, uh, you know block that data it will allow that data and that data can be harmful for your computer okay firewall yes so firewall to allow kar so, इस तरह से आपने तो ये कुछ ए पॉइंट्स हैं कि जहां पे आपका कंप्यूटर जो है वो सिक्योर या फायरवॉल आपको प्रिवेंट नहीं कर सकती ठीक है नेक्स्ट कमिंग टुवर्ड्स द प्रॉक्सी सर्वर सो ऑलमोस्ट द प्रॉक्सी सर्वर एंड द फंक्शंस ऑफ द फायरवॉल्स आर सिमिलर um, proxy server also uh, does most of the uh, same tasks, but it has certain, uh, you know, uh, functions which are different, okay? Uh, the first function is allowing the internet traffic to be filtered. This is the same, okay? And they can block access to a website if necessary, okay? The second point is, um, you know, uh, that is only, uh, you can say, used by the proxy server only. Uh, by using the feature known as cache, they can speed up access to information from a website. When the website is first visited, the homepage is stored on the proxy server. When the user next time visits the website, it now goes through the proxy server cache instead giving much faster access. Okay. Yeah, this is the proxy server. Okay, just you can assume it so that you can understand the concept. These are the users. Um, this user wants to open Google or some other website. Okay, so the internet. So first, 
goes to the proxy server and then it is distributed among different users okay so first the google will come on the proxy server where that website will be cached okay that website is stored okay and then user access that website so next time whenever user opens or this user wants to open the website so this website is directly loaded on, into uh, on uh, this computer uh, ultimately saving the time theek hai wo jo loading time hota hai bar bar jo aap naye sire se kholte hain websites wo bach jata hai theek hai keeping the user's ip address secret theek hai this clearly improves security uh for example the ip address of this user was like i'm just writing it randomly this was the ip address okay since all the data is going to internet passing through the proxy server okay so your ip will be hidden at this stage it will not go outside to the internet so your ip address is much more secure your computer is much more secure so your ip will be secret okay after uh, proxy servers we have a new topic it's security protocols uh, we will discuss two types of security protocols ssl um, secure sockets layer and tls transport layer security so let's discuss what is ssl secure socket layer well, basically it's a type of protocol and what are the protocols basically protocols are the rules when um two computers wants to communicate over the uh, across the network um so the the protocols are set so that both the computers can understand each others data okay the data which is being transmitted from one computer to other so ssl basically it's a type of protocol which encrypts the data okay it actually scrambles the data we will discuss encryption in the uh, coming topics in detail but basically it encrypts the data uh, that means it change the format of the data it scrambles the data so that uh, if any unauthorized person gets access to the data that person will not be able to understand it and how you will make sure that ssl is active when you are using a certain website okay so you will see this padlock symbol okay and secondly you will see https on the left side of the url let me show you a certain url um here you can clearly see uh this is a url of a certain uh youtube uh, channel uh you can see this padlock symbol and this https okay so that means ssl is active on this website coming back to the topic so now what happens when a user wants to access a secure website and is um, uh, and receive and send data to it so uh, we will discuss different steps so let's discuss them uh, one by one uh, when the users the users web browser sends a message so that uh, it can connect with the required website which is secured by ssl okay first of all whenever you type a url that means uh, uh, you are typing www.google.com and you have press entered okay basically you have sent a request okay so the web browser then request the web server identifies itself so that request goes to the web server so this was your computer and here it was a server okay you have typed a certain website and clicked enter that request goes to this server for example this is a google server okay so what happens next so now this request says okay identify yourself okay 
So now web server, what the web server will do, basically it will send its SSL to the client. This is basically client, this is your computer. It will send an SSL. Basically this is the SSL certificate, secured socket layer certificate. Okay. If the browser, if the web browser can authenticate this certificate, it sends uh, a message back to the web server to allow communication. Okay, now the web browser authenticates it because it has all the information of those valid certificates. If it says, okay, this certificate is valid, it sends the message back to the server. Basically, this is now acknowledgement. Okay, asking the server, okay, this certificate is valid. Okay, this is okay. identity is last step. Ab ye message, jaise isko mila, once the message is received, the web server uh, you know, acknowledges the web browser and then SSL encrypted two-way and uh, encrypted two-way data transfer begins. Okay. Jab ye isne wapis isko acknowledge kiya, to web server bhi kega, okay, thik hai. Abhi mein aapko data send karta hon. To wo ab start sending the data to the, ab ye data encrypted hoga sara. Thik hai. Okay, so this is what happens when a web browser makes a request to open a certain secure website. So these are the certain steps which are carried out. Okay. And next is the transport layer security, TLS. So TLS is basically an advanced form of SSL. Okay, it provides all the feature, but in a most advanced form. Um, basically, um, it is uh, essentially designed to provide encryption, authentication, and data integrity in a more effective way than its uh, predecessor SSL. So encryption, you already know, it provides encryption, scrambles the data so that uh, um, any unauthorized person will not be able to understand data. And then authentication. Authentication means ke, uh, you are asked to enter your password, your login, okay? Um, to enter your biometric information so that the other computer will be able to identify you, okay, that you are the valid person, okay? And data integrity. Integrity means that uh, data aap send kar rahe ho, kya receiver ko bhi wohi mil rahe? Okay. So it applies different error checking methods. Uh, say check some hota hai, parity check hota hai. These are applied to make sure, okay, the data is same, which the sender wanted to send. Okay. So yeah, these are responsibilities that TLS uh, performs. In this case, TLS has two um, sub-layers. The first is the record protocol. It has an, uh, you know, this part of communication uh, can be used with or without encryption. Okay? Ke, uh, you know, ke kush data hota hai, you don't want to encrypt it. Okay? And some data is uh, much more private and you want it to encrypt it. So, this part hai, of communication, ye use hota hai with or without encryption. Okay. And second, jo is clear and that is handshake protocol. Okay. So uh, basically, it permits the client to authenticate each other and to make use of encryption algorithm. Okay. So yahan pe whenever handshake protocol takes place, wahan pe both the computers will have to authenticate itself. Okay. Uh, ek identify karna hai by certain pressing certain keys hai? just like uh, for example uh, uh, two people are uh, connecting their cell phones using the bluetooth so before that handshake takes place hai? exchange of key hoti hai. and then the data transmission takes place hai? so these were the two sub layers of transport layer security.